Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning, the text is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 22, and this is what it says. And the Lord your God will clear away these nations before you little by little. You will not be able to put an end to them quickly, lest the wild beasts grow too numerous for you. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, we always need you, and this day is no different. We need you to help us give praise, give blessing, give thanks. We need you to help us listen, to take to heart your word among the many words that we hear this day. Use this day. Use this time. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. When I was about nine or ten years old, I was spending the night with my cousin. And uh, we were all gathered around the television watching a program. And the... TV show that came on was Then Came Bronson. It was a show about a, a fellow who rode a motorcycle every episode into a new town. He was sort of like the Lone Ranger or Spider-Man on a motorcycle, and he would go from town to town every episode and, and solve whatever injustice or problem was going on in that town. And every episode began the same way, that Bronson was at the gas station putting gas in his motorcycle, and suit and die suit and tie guy walks up and he says uh, where are you headed and Bronson says what'd you say he says where are you going Bronson says wherever I end up I guess suit and tie guy says wish I could be like you so Bronson cranks his motorcycle and revs it up and says hang in there and then he rides off into the sunset <laughs> well this time after the, the the opening of the show I heard a voice kind of mumbled underneath his breath in the back of the room it was my uncle he said Wow, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I was stunned. I mean, my nine-year-old self didn't understand why in the world. My uncle was, was suit and tie guy. He'd graduated from tech. I, I couldn't understand why in the world he would go, wow, I wish I could do that. <laughs> it didn't take long. It didn't take long at all to realize that he was just voicing what we all have deep inside of us. We all want a fresh start. We all want a new beginning. We all want a do-over. That's the message of the Bible. A new beginning, a fresh start, a do-over. That Adam and Eve, God put them in, right there with everything they needed and more. They were in the Garden of Eden and he said, don't eat from the fruit of the tree in the center of the garden. What did Adam and Eve do? We got fruit, where's fruit? They had to have a new start. A fresh start, a new beginning, a do-over. It's the story of Noah. After that, that new beginning, that fresh start, that do-over, uh, things got horrible. And God began a, a, a fresh start, a new beginning, a do-over with Noah and his family. It's the story of Abraham. Abraham lived in the land of the Chaldeans. And that's when God invited him to travel, to travel to a place he'd never been before, a place where his family 
would be the, the family. His children, his children's children, his children's 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 children would be the family to, to reveal God to the world. And that he would journey with God in this fresh start, in this new beginning, this do-over. And Abraham became a friend of God. It's the story of Moses. That Moses was sent to, to Pharaoh to use the words of God to say, let my people go. The Hebrews, they were, they were slaves to Pharaoh, and, and, and that it would be Moses that would, would lead them. With God's help, by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, through the, the wilderness to the promised land, to a new beginning, a fresh start, a do-over. And that, 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 that journey through the wilderness that God would leave them every step of the way. And now we're at Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, it's, it's a copy in some ways of, of what had gone on before. It was written without a, a title. And the Hebrews called it Devarim in Hebrew. It means the book of words. And the words that they, they carry with them, now Moses is, is is sitting in the wilderness, and he's pointing to the promised land. They can see this land that they've been talking about, they've been dreaming about, this land flowing with milk and honey. They can see it just over the River Jordan. And Moses tells them that the Lord your God will clear away these nations before you little by little. You won't be able to take it all quickly lest the wild beasts grow too numerous for you. And, and what Moses gives to them is words, words, words to carry into the promised land, into the new beginning, into the fresh start. And that's what I want to talk about this morning, the words that we carry, the words that we carry. And the first word that I want to talk about this morning is the word of blessing. Deuteronomy 2 verse 7 says, For the Lord your God has blessed you in all that you have done. He has known your wanderings through this great wilderness. These 40 years the Lord your God has been with you. You have not lacked a thing. That remember, rehearse, practice the blessing. Go over it again and again and again. That God gave manna in the wilderness. That God gave water that God gave everything you needed all along the way. And it was, it was in that journey that they went from being no people to being God's people. That it, it's very seldom that God takes us out of the wilderness, but always God sees us through. In the 1850s or the 1800s, the, the United States was the envy of the world. They were the envy of the world because the West had opened up. And it was an opportunity for a new beginning, a fresh start, a do-over for people all over the world. And, and Brewster Higley wrote a song, My Home on the Range, Home, Home on the Range, where the deer and the antelope play. I mean, if you want to start a, 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 a new beginning, a fresh start, a do-over, do it where the bears don't eat you. Do it where the, the, the animals are playing and just goofing off every day. Mountain lions, don't worry about mountain lions that animals are just goofing off and having fun where seldom is heard a discouraging word after the year that we've had I vote for not a discouraging word I mean all we've heard is discouraging words seems like again and again and again all we've heard is about a, a pandemic that we need to worry about that we need to be afraid of I believe we're at the point of a fresh start, a new beginning, a do-over. And the word, the word that we carry with us is that word of blessing, that word of thanks, that God was with us all along the way, and it's time for a fresh start, a new beginning, a do-over. But it requires that we practice the blessing, that we remember the blessing, that we go over the blessing. Jim Burns, in his book, Radically Committed, tells a story 
that happened in New York City that this woman had made her way to the, the roof of a 56-floor building. She was ready to jump off to her, her death. The police were called, and, and they tried to coax her down, but every time they took a step forward, she would say, don't come any closer, I'll jump. Well, this was a different kind of situation for the police because she's not at all what they were accustomed to encountering. This was a, an older woman, well-dressed, and she, she seemed like that she had been well taken care of and, and didn't have a, a worry in the world. But here she was, uh, ready to jump off the, the roof of the building. That's when one of the officers called his pastor and said, Pastor, pray for this woman. Well, he did pray for the woman, but he also came down to where the police were. He watched for a while and could see that they weren't making any headway, and he asked the police captain if it would be all right if he stepped onto the roof and tried to talk to the woman. The captain said, well, it couldn't do any harm, so he stepped out onto the roof, and the woman said, don't come any closer or I'll jump. That's when he said, I'm sorry you believe no one loves you. Well, that got the woman's attention. She said, what do, you, what do you mean? He went on to say, I'm sorry that your grandchildren must have, have not given you any attention. She said, no, my grandchildren, they've, they've been very good. And then she began to tell him about her grandchildren. And after a while, he said, why were you going to jump? She said, I don't remember. And she came back to safety with him. Practicing the blessing. Practicing what we have it is to, to give thanks for. Practicing how God is has helped us along the way, step by step. The way Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through Him to God the Father. Do all you do, giving thanks. Giving thanks to the Lord Jesus. It's what leads us on to a new beginning, a fresh start, a do-over. It's the words that they carried, and it's the words that, that you and I can carry too, that word of blessing, that word of thanks. But the second word, the word we carry, uh, that I want to talk about is that word of warning. Here in verse seven, chapter 7, verse 22, it says, that The Lord God will, not clear the, will clear these nations before you little by little. It will not be quickly lest the wild beasts grow too numerous for you. That it's not going to be the, the adversaries. It's not going to be those who are against you. It's going to be the prosperity. That prosperity is going to be too much for you. And you'll be overcome by having too much of a good thing. When I was a kid, my father bought season tickets to the Falcons game. On occasion, he'd take me with him. And I, at a young age, I became a Falcons fan, which means I've been disappointed for a long, long time. <laughs> but 2017, it, the, the future looked bright. Falcons were in the Super Bowl. Three quarters of the game were wonderful. The Falcons were ahead 28-3. to three. In the last 18 minutes of the game, I'm... Four years later, almost ready to, to get over it. Not quite, but almost. Back in 1999, that was another year that the Falcons showed great hope. They won all but two of their games that year. They were going to the Super Bowl, and it looked like if ever there were a time that, that they were going to win, that that was going to be it. Uh, they were in Miami at the Super Bowl, and they had a defensive back who was really great, Eugene Robinson. Eugene Robinson was a pro bowler, and not only that, the night before the game, he received the Bart Starr Award. This was for a player that wasn't just good on the field, this was a player of high character. And shortly after he received that award, 
he was arrested in a part of town that exhibited that, well, his character wasn't near as high as what he was being awarded for. He spent the night in jail the night before the Super Bowl. He didn't get out until the day off, and he was late reporting to the stadium. And that day, before the game and during the game, that's all the players could talk about. They lost their focus, and they lost the game. That forgiveness, it comes, and it comes quickly. That's what Jesus did on the cross for you and me. Mistakes aren't just something for pro athletes that we all make them. We all miss the mark. We all blow it. That forgiveness comes quickly, but it's character that comes step by step, little by little. And that the places that that we're most in danger, the places where you and I need to be warned are those places that we're strong, not where we're weak. Those places where we don't watch out. The way that Jesus put it, he says, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That we're required to follow him, not just sometimes or not just the hard times, not just in the times of trouble, but daily daily, daily, that the fresh start, the new beginning, the do-over, well, really, it's done daily, step by step. And the word of warning, that's the word of warning. It comes little by little, little by little. The words that we carry, yes, it needs to be the word of blessing. Yes, it needs to be the word of warning that step by step, little by little is the way character is built. But the last thing that I want to talk about is the word that we carry is the word of faith. The word of faith. Carol Campbell is an educator, and he, he said, try this sometime. Get a group of children in a room with a, a light fixture hanging just out of their grasp. Then watch what happens. One child will jump to touch it. Every kid in the room will be leaping like Michael Jordan. They're testing their skill, stimulated by the challenge of reaching something beyond their normal grasp. Put the same children in a room where everything is easily in reach. There will be no jumping, no competition, no challenge. And I wonder if the same is not only true in education, but if it's also true in faith, in our understanding of God as well. That I wonder, I just wonder if, if we've let the good enough news get in the way of the good news. That the good enough news says that God loves you just the way you are. And there's nothing that calls us to more, calls us to a step beyond that, that we've let the good enough news that, that God loves you just the way you are get in the way of the good news. The good news is God loves you just the way you are, but He loves you too much to leave you that way. That what Jesus did on the cross for you and for me was He he took all those things that would destroy us. He took the fear. He took the shame. He took the sin. He took the doubt. He took the guilt. He took that thing that, 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 that you're the only one that knows about. He took it on himself and he nailed it to the cross. There's no good news without the cross. Because on the cross, he took all those things that would destroy us and he nailed them to the cross to kill them once and for all. And when he rose from the grave, he rose to give us power that we don't have on our own. He, he, he rose from the grave to usher in a new creation. And that there's no good news, no new creation without a cross and a resurrection. That the risen Christ, the Spirit of God, lives inside of, of you and me, giving us a fresh start, a new beginning, a do-over. And that even though the, 
The power of the risen Christ is in you and me. Faith is hard. Faith is very hard. That it requires all of our heart. All of our soul. It requires all of our mind. That that relationship with Jesus Christ requires all of our strength. The good news is that we're not in it alone. That His Spirit, His Spirit lives in us. Do you not know that you're the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? That His Spirit lives in us. That step by step, daily, little by little, that we might rely on Him. We might lean on Him and we might trust Him. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. That he's ushered in a new creation. Not one day, but this day. And it starts inside of you and me. It starts with those words that we carry. The word of faith. The word of warning and that word of blessing. It may be that um, you've not carried, carried those words with you. And I want to pray with you this morning. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, we need you this day, this time. Whether this time is one of the best ever or if it's one of the hardest ever. We need you to help us practice that word of blessing. It may be all year long we've practiced that word of, of complaining. We've practiced that discouraging word because we've heard it so often. Lord, you have more for us. Help us practice, rehearse, remember the word of blessing, the word of thanks. Lord, it may be that this day is... Maybe one of the best days ever. Doesn't mean we need you any less. But very often, that place that we stumble most is the place where we're strongest. Because forgiveness might come quickly, but character, it comes one step at a time. And that's what you desire to grow within us, step by step, daily, little by little. Lord, may we never take that for granted, but carry with us that word of warning. Lord, there may be some that have never said yes to you, said yes, that, that you are the Lord of their lives. That it may be that, yes, they, they knew that, that you loved them just the way they were, but it may be that they didn't know what you did on the cross really had any effect in their lives and that this day that this day they want to invite you to make your home in their heart with a power a power that heart soul mind and strength lean on you for forgiveness Heart, soul, mind, and strength lean on you for a new start. Heart, soul, mind, and strength lean on you for a, a new beginning, a do-over. That your new creation, well, it might begin this day. Not one day, but this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com.
www.thepeopleofgod.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online, my hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life, and my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.